TLC Media Production. How many of you were present here last Sunday and were blessed to learn of the ministry of angels? Yeah? Oh, glory to God. Well, that was last Sunday, but two Sundays ago, or rather the Sunday before last Sunday and the Sunday before <laughs> that Sunday, we zoomed in on one verse in the Holy Scripture, the Holy Writ. And that was 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 30. Remember? But of him you are in Christ. You are not in church, you are in Christ. Why? Because you are the church. So, if you are in yourself, then I don't know what that means, but you are in Christ and therefore the church. And you became for us wisdom from God. And we learned of what that meant about three Sundays ago. Then it said that we are righteousness. And then there was a combination there. Righteousness, because it said after wisdom of God, two dashes, and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Three things in one. One must follow the other. But first, righteousness. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. In other words, nobody was born righteous. Nobody was born with the right relationship with the holy God. But by grace through faith, we repented from sin. We took a conscious decision to hate sin. Why? Because we understood that sin is a destroyer. It ruins us. It robs us and ultimately causes us to perish in hellfire, a burning lake of sulfur. But God so loved us that he sent Jesus Christ to us that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have life which is eternal. To believe in him is not to give mental assent and say, yes, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. To believe in him is to believe in everything that he has spoken. And when he says to do something, that you do it. That you submit to his authority and call him Lord. So the Savior who shed his blood to save you, when he saves you because you repented from sin, forsook your former ways and chose the will of God for your life, you are now become the righteousness of God in him. You have rightness before God. You are in right standing before God now. That's why the word is used become, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Now you might want to ask yourself, am I the righteousness of God in him? Confidently answer, joyfully answer yes. Because I heard the clarion call of the gospel one day and my heart leapt out with thanksgiving that there is one who loves me so much that he suffered so much to give me this new life, this forgiveness and beyond the grave, eternal bliss and so you respond to God thereafter to what he first did we love him because he first loved us and we walk in righteousness why is that because four verses down the line in that same chapter in 2nd Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21 we read that 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, He made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Yes, what are we now? 2 Corinthians 5.17 5.17 
if anyone is in Christ if is a condition and in Christ not in church in Christ not in a denomination not in a church you are the church now if anyone is in Christ if he dwells in you and his word dwells in you you are a new creation you are a new creation all old things have passed away behold all things have become new the old things have passed away behold all things have become new now i want to hasten to tell you that this verse is prophetic in theological parlance it's eschatological it is telling forth of what is going to happen when the new heaven and the new earth is established for which you are taught to pray and say thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven so when that happens all things will have become new because john saw the vision and he narrated it to us in the first seven verses of revelation 21 and he said for the former things have passed away so all thing all things have passed away behold all things have become new you and i when we reach our final destination the new heaven and the new earth our eternal home face to face with god then behold means see all things have become new all things have become new revelation 21 and verse 5 our lord says i make all things new he who sat on the throne said behold see i make all things new he said to me right for these words are true and faithful this again refers to what we will see when we have been resurrected resurrected from the dead just like the man jesus of nazareth and have put on that glorified spiritual body to live eternally in his presence behold i make all things new see look around it's all new who did it i did it the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end he did it this is the wonderful work of a living loving god the almighty the sovereign god working out his purpose so that's why he says these words are true and these words are faithful but you see in that same chapter verses 3 and 4 it tells you the difference between the old and the new i heard a loud voice from heaven saying behold the tabernacle of god is with men he says see look around my dwelling is with you just like he fellowshiped with adam in the garden of eden the first creation that we know of in the last 7000 years because there were those creations before which were utterly destroyed but this planet earth is 7000 years old and when the garden of eden came into being and god separated the light from darkness and darkness from light and the dry ground appeared and the waters were separated when he created our first ancestor it was a perfect world it was the kingdom of god and then now again just like he dwelt with adam and eve and fellowshiped with them in the cool of the day in the garden of eden it's going to happen again when the kingdom of god is here on earth again and he says see again this is prophetic of what is going to happen at that time he will be saying look around my beloved the tabernacle of god is with men my dwelling is with you and i will dwell with you and you will be mine they shall be his people god himself will be with them and be their god says that verse and god will wipe away every tear from their eyes there shall be no more death no sorrow no crying there shall be no more pain for the former things have passed away 
Behold, all things have become new. All things are passed away. So that verse that Paul was inspired to write to the Corinthian church, as I said to you at the beginning, is prophetic, eschatological. See, he says, my dwelling is with you. No more pain, no more sorrow, no more death. Now that's why I said that these verses tell you the difference between the old and the new. Now there is pain, there is sorrow, there is heartbreak, sickness, disease, poverty, lack, none of which was in the beginning when God created the world. But sin propelled all these things into being. But now the kingdom of God is at hand. And when the kingdom of God is here, none of that will be seen at all. No more pain, no more sorrow, no more death, no more heartache. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What's the difference? The former things, the things which are now, have passed away. And the new has come. This difference, my dear beloved, God has already begun in human hearts and lives where lives are being transformed into the likeness and image of God. From glory to glory is your life being transformed. If you tell me I repented of sin, believed on the Lord Jesus, he forgave me my sins, I received new life, I'm born again, then I need to see the symptoms of that new life by the transformation that is in you and in your life, which you demonstrate to the world. The AD and the BC, the after Christ and before Christ experience in your life. That must be evident. And that will be once you receive the Holy Spirit and conquer sin and evil. That's why our Lord Jesus says, Acts 1.8, and you will receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you will be witnesses of me. Witnesses to me. You will produce the evidence to me that I am your Lord, that I am in you, that you live by me, the Word. He's the Word. He's the Word. In the beginning was the Word and He was the Word that became flesh. Acts 4.12 says, There is no other name given under heaven whereby men shall be saved, save the name of Yeshua, Jesus. Why is that? There is no other name given under heaven, but above the atmospheric heaven, where the throne of God is, where the Lord Jesus is now, the place from which he came. For in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. And the word became flesh and dressed amongst us. His name is not Jesus. His name is Jesus under heaven. As the angel Gabriel gave command to his virgin mother Mary, his name shall be called Yeshua, for he shall save his people. Above the heavens, his name is, what's it? Look in your Bible in Revelation 19.13. He is called the Word of God. You see him coming down at the second coming with a robe dipped in blood and on his thigh his name, the Word of God. Because that's it. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh. Now he's back where he came from and he's the Word. He's the Word. But he's given us authority in his name under heaven where we are under this atmospheric heaven to conquer sin and evil to bring healing and deliverance and to be witnesses to him hallelujah glory to God so you see the difference God has already begun in your heart and life and you are being transformed into the likeness and image of God from glory to glory. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image 
from glory to glory just as by the spirit of the lord so now you stop and ask yourself again the second question as i tell you don't just read scripture don't just listen to preaching or even teaching but pause where it is necessary and let the word have its work in you ask yourself the question is this if it is the expectation of god happening in my life am i being transformed into the image of god into the likeness of god transformed from glory to glory by the spirit of the lord because that is the will of god for you and that happens when you are submitted to his will which is conveyed in his word so you see this difference between the old and the new is wrought in us by the indwelling holy spirit the difference between what is now and what is to come a foretaste of heaven on earth is given to us now you need to see that you are enabled now god has begun the work of all i make all things new now in you who's you the church of the lord jesus christ pure and holy this difference is wrought in us my beloved by the indwelling holy spirit 1 corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16 Don't you know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you So you see the tabernacle of God is already with men Hello the dwelling of God is already with men As you saw in 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 the revelation account of the new heaven and the new earth when he said behold the tabernacle of God is with man which means the dwelling of god is with man it's already begun now in you because you have become the temple of the most high god if only you realize that and don't just take god for granted don't look at him like a sugar daddy don't just look at him as a papa who has to give you what you want when you want and just bless you and bless you according to what you think is the blessing you need but rather receive from him the greater blessing divine deliverance and protection and guidance healing and all of the provision you ever needed for god is love and he loves you that he sent jesus that you should have a new life of all this which moves into eternity beyond the grave so you see the tabernacle of god is already with men what men who are given to holiness and righteousness the work of god in his kingdom has already begun in you now you have to come to a realization of this a consciousness of this don't just be a bunch of religious people following the herd going in and out of a church building warming up you and saying hallelujah praise the lord and going home and not being aware of your identity not being aware of god's purpose in you is it happening in you as he is speaking to you this morning i tell you this morning is vital for you and for your salvation because one day you will give account and he will say to you did i not forewarn you that you might be forearmed so he who has an ear let him hear what the lord is saying to you by his spirit and why is he saying this because he loves you because he loves you everything about god is love thank you lord hallowed be your name so the tabernacle of god is already with you if you're given to holiness and righteousness like i said the work of god in his kingdom 
has already begun in you. The Lord Jesus gave us this promise in John 14 verses 16 to 18 saying, I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. The tabernacle of God is with men. Or to use the more familiar term, Emmanuel, God with us. God with us. I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper. What do you mean by another? Another equal with me, that he may abide with you forever, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Every Tom, Dick and Harry cannot receive. Then who can receive the Holy Spirit? The one who has been washed in the blood of the Lamb and brought to holiness. And what is holiness? To be set apart from sin. And when the blood washing has done that, you are now in line to receive the gift of God. And that is the helper, the counselor, the paraclete to the Holy Spirit given by God by promise and as a gift. The world cannot receive him, but you have the grace, the unmerited favor to receive him. And he is given to you because you need him. What do you need? Help. Help to conquer sin and evil. Help to live in the will of God. Help to demonstrate to the world that you love the Father, as Jesus said in John 14 and verse 30. Help to produce the evidence, the witness to Jesus and to the world that you belong to him, that he has saved you and you are his disciple, his church. And so my dear beloved, he says, the world neither sees him nor knows him, but your spiritual eyes have been opened. You know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. He dwells with you. What does that tell you? The tabernacle of God is with men. Is with you. Is with you. That is why I said the work of his soon coming kingdom has already begun in you. Why do you think John the Baptist used those words in Matthew 3 and verse 2 and asked men and women everywhere to repent? What's the purpose? The kingdom of God is at hand. What did our Lord Jesus say in Mark 1 and verse 15? The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Therefore repent and believe in the gospel. You repent and believe to be saved from sins and to inherit the kingdom of God which is coming on earth again. Hallelujah! So keep your eyes on what is to happen, what God has planned both for himself and for you, his kingdom, and you purchased by the blood of Jesus, his own. Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord. So he will pray the Father. He will pray the Father. And again, I want you to say, it says in that verse, he dwells with you and will be in you. And my Lord Jesus promises, I will not leave you often. I will not leave you desolate, says one Bible translation. I will come to you. So he who is on the right hand of the Father comes to us in the Helper, in the Counselor, in the Holy Spirit. Why? Because it's one God. One God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. In fellowship, in agreement, in covenant. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So the new creation whom God has made of you is called in righteousness by the Lord Jesus Christ and sustained in holiness by the Holy Spirit. You are called in righteousness. In other words, you are called to repent from sin, believe on him and be washed in the blood. It's as though you never sinned at all at that moment 
because all your sins are washed away by the blood of the Lamb. And you stand before God righteous in right standing with God. And then you are to move on from that place in righteousness. There must be a continuity of that righteousness which God began as a work in your life. And if you, if you allow him, he will do it. Philippians 1.6 says, He who began a good work in you will complete it. Provided you don't obstruct him, you don't hinder him, you don't grieve him, but you love him, you serve him, and you obey him all the way. This morning, God speaks concerning your identity in Christ. You are in him both righteous and holy. You are set apart from sin. You are in right standing because your sins are washed away and thereby set apart from sin. You are holy and in a restored relationship with God who is holy. You have become the righteousness of God in him. Therefore, what must you do? What must you do after you have been cleansed and washed in the blood? 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1 has the answer. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Because it is written, 1 Peter 1 verse 16, Be holy, for I am holy. Be holy, for I am holy. Righteousness and holiness are synonymous. They go hand in hand. At the end of every hour you spend in your life, stop. And ask yourself, am I holy? Am I holy? Am I holy? Because the Lord is righteous and holy in all his ways. Psalm 145, 17. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. So must our way be in him righteous and holy as Peter in 1 Peter 3 12 quotes from Psalm 34 and verse 15 Psalm 34 and verse 15 remember that the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open to our prayers hallelujah the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to hear us when we pray besides Proverbs 21.21 21 says, It is he who follows righteousness that finds life. And so this is significant. It is important for us to be careful to live and walk in the world. He who follows righteousness and mercy finds life, righteousness and honor. So it is he who follows righteousness that finds life. What are you following? Are you following a life which is in right standing with God? If you are, rejoice in the Lord and be glad because you are both finding life and you have found life. You found life and you want to live in that life and you continue to find that life is yours. Amen. Hallelujah. Now this is not speaking of our own righteousness, but of the righteousness of God in Christ, which is his gift of grace. Unmerited favor, he bestowed it upon us. He allowed us to become the righteousness of God in him. Isaiah 64, 6 says that all our righteousness, what's it like? They are like filthy rags. Filthy rags. There you are. 
we are all like an unclean thing and all our righteousness are like filthy rags filthy rags this being an adult audience i can make bold to tell you that the original translation lets you understand that filthy rags refer there to used menstrual pads that's what our righteousness is compared to our righteousness our righteousness it is worthless it is useless but remember this Ephesians 2 verse 8 and 9 says clearly that we are not saved by works lest any man should boast for by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of god it is the gift of god that's why i told you we became the righteousness of god in him by undeserved favor by grace we received it through faith by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of god not of works not of works lest any one should boast and the next verse 10 also says that we are his workmanship that new creation created in christ jesus for good works ephesians 2:10 for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them why did he prepare it beforehand for you for you to read about it in scripture and smile no that you should walk in them take it to heart this is the believers walk of faith Take it to heart my friend live the life don't be hearers only but doers of the word for the word is precious the word is precious we are his workmanship that new creation created in Christ Jesus for good works so what does that mean if we are not saved by our works they are like our own righteousness is like filthy rags but becoming the righteousness of god in him makes us acceptable to god makes us acceptable to god what does it mean then if we are not saved by works as james writes in chapter 2 and verse 17 and 24 faith without works is dead that's also faith by itself if it does not have works is dead now you are asking me if we are not saved by works lest any man should boast then we see that a man is justified by works and not by faith alone what's he talking about this is speaking of our engagement in the works of god living and walking not according to the flesh but under the direction of the holy spirit that's what it means working the works of god not in our power not in our strength not according to our will according to the will of god in his power and in his strength as paul declared i can do all things through jesus christ he strengthens me that's what it means my friend that's what it means Romans chapter 8 verse 1 13 and 14 There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh who do not walk according to the flesh your own righteousness is produced by the flesh but now according to the spirit you walk not according to the flesh but according to the spirit for if you live according to the flesh you will die that spiritual death but if by the spirit by the spirit not in your own strength 
if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body you will live for as many as are led by the spirit of god these are the sons of god now my precious brother and sister in christ with all the love in my heart i'm asking you the question what are you doing how are you living or you ask yourself the question am i putting to death the deeds of the body by the power of the holy spirit did i do that yesterday did i do that day before what did i do when did i do that because if you put to death the deeds of the body you will live hallelujah for as many as are led by the spirit governed by the spirit enveloped by the holy spirit these are born of god sons of god hallelujah this is why 1 corinthians chapter 1 verse 30 says what we saw at the beginning and a few sundays ago christ jesus became for us righteousness and sanctification and redemption sanctification what does that mean the one who is set apart from sin and become holy now must be sanctified sanctification is to be set apart for god is your life set apart for god in his purpose now that's another question you need to ask yourself not for me to ask you but for you to ask yourself because you see salvation is individual and personal it's all to do with you and god whether you like it or not you will stand up before that white throne judgment one day so better work it out now when there is so much love so much compassion so much mercy and grace flowing towards you better receive it with thanksgiving humble yourself to the dust christ jesus became for us sanctification righteousness and sanctification so sanctification is being set apart for god did you know that sanctification is the will of god for you 1 thessalonians chapter 4 verses 3 and 4 for this is the will of god your sanctification so that is the will of god for your life have you ignored it have you set it aside have you not bothered about it are you not concerned with it better be abstain from sexual immorality that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor glory to god you know you hear these words because god loves you he wants to take you past the pitfalls to be forewarned i say again is to be forearm being set apart from sin and holiness being set apart from sin and becoming holy refuse sin and be sanctified be set apart for god for the outworking of his purpose in your life let that happen my friend remember god chose you second thessalonians chapter 2 verses 13 and 14 for salvation how through sanctification but we are bound to give thanks to god always says second thessalonians 2:13 why because you are the beloved of the lord because god from the beginning chose you for what for salvation how through sanctification by the spirit and belief in the truths did you understand that take those words into your heart take those words and embed them in your heart live in them live in them and find life god from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification by the spirit and belief in the truth that's why the lord jesus became for us our sanctification our wisdom our righteousness our sanctification 
Peter in 1 Peter 1 and verse 2 calls you the elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father in sanctification of the Spirit for obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace be multiplied. See, you are the elect, the called out people of God according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. In other words, he knew how you would respond to his call to repent and believe and receive the gift of eternal life. That's the foreknowledge of God. But he called you in sanctification of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit sets you apart for God as you are willing to be set apart for God. And what is it to be set apart for God? That you are obedient to his will. You are not perfect, but your heart is ever willing and given to obedience and the love of God. If and when you make a mistake, because there's a war between the flesh and the spirit, then the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ avails for you, because he paid the wages of every sin, past, present, and future. But every sin can be wiped away every time you truly repent and want to live in righteousness, in right standing with God, being sanctified and set apart for God, and living in His will. Then grace and peace will indeed be multiplied to you. Peace will indeed be multiplied to you. So Paul also writes thus in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 2 when he began to write that epistle. He's writing to the church of God which is at Corinth to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus called to be saints. Now the word saint is the shortened form for anyone who is sanctified. And whenever Paul wrote to the church in Ephesians or Galatia or Colossians, he said, I'm writing to the saints in Galatia, in Ephesians and Colossae because he, he, he took for granted that you cannot be a part of the church if you are not righteous, sanctified, set apart for God, holy, set apart from sin, and set apart for God in his purpose. So to the church of God, he's writing, which is according to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, that is to be identified as being sanctified, with all who in every place call on the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Well, that's how Paul was inspired to write that letter right at the beginning. And finally, as our main theme verse, for so long, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 30 says, Jesus also became our redemption. And what is he? He became the wisdom of God and also righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Now the dictionary, I looked at the Oxford Dictionary and that describes redemption as being the expending of effort and money. Effort and money. In other words, an effort to purchase. An effort to purchase. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 20 and 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 23 say the same thing. You were bought at a price. You were bought at a price. There it is. Okay? For you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Glorify God in your body. In other words, crucify your flesh with its passions. And in your human spirit, let it be connected to the Holy Spirit and made the righteousness of God, the divine, the born of God. You were bought at a price. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7, 
and Colossians chapter 1 verse 14 say the same thing we have redemption through his blood that's why the Lord Jesus became for us righteousness and sanctification and redemption in him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace one uh, Colossians 1 14 says in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord as you live in righteousness and sanctification my friend you can have confidence when the day of the Lord his second advent takes place and it won't be too long the Lord Jesus says in Luke 21 27 and 28 they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. In other words, your redemption is not just now, it's in continuity. You were redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. But now you must continue in that state of redemption because your redemption will be identified, will be conclusive, will be sealed and will be revealed at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you understand? Can you understand what the Lord is saying to you? Not I. Keep it in your heart. Treasure these words that our Lord is speaking unto you today he's speaking of the redemption of your body he's speaking of the redemption of your body when he says look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near he's speaking of the redemption of your body when as in 1 Corinthians 15 52 in a moment in the twinkling of an eye on resurrection morn you will be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed so this is what we say we believe in you know many churches recite I say recite because they just recite <laughs> uh, and don't get excited. It says, and I believe in the resurrection of the dead. And that is to say that your mortal body will become immortal. This corruption will put on incorruption. It is the work of God in us ultimately. In other words, with and on resurrection morn and that's the day when the father gives the nod to the son on his right hand and says now and the Lord Jesus arises to come down that's when we shall all see him coming in the clouds in his glory with the trumpet of the angels and when the dead in Christ will rise first rise means resurrection morn it means the redemption of your body that's why he said look up for your redemption draws nigh the redemption of your body in other words it is changed your old body is redeemed into the new you put on a glorified spiritual body just like Jesus of Nazareth put on at his resurrection that's it that's it that's why he said don't touch me then you will say, but he told Thomas, here, look at mine. But Thomas never did that either. Thomas had revelation not to do that, but to go down, flat down before him and worship him and say, my Lord and my God. Now, we shall all be changed. This corruption, this decaying body, gone. We will have a body in which we must live forever live forever looking younger than springtime what does that mean ladies no more fair and lovely 
Gentlemen, no more anti-aging cream. You will be forever and ever in that glorious spiritual body which you will receive. That is the redemption of your body. That is why that verse referred to the redemption of your body. When the Lord Jesus spoke in Luke 21, 27, 28, He said, look up. Why? Because your redemption draws nigh. It's already begun. But this is speaking about the redemption of the body. Redemption of the body. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Your redemption draws nigh. So now, 1 Corinthians 15, 52 said, again, let's look at that. In a moment in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. This is Christ in us, the hope of glory. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 4 declares, When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Then you also will appear with him in glory. My dear beloved, live a life, work at it, always and always, to have that assurance that there is therefore now no condemnation for me. Say that to yourself. Romans 8.1 There is therefore now no condemnation for me because I walk not according to the flesh but according to the Spirit. I live in Christ. I am the righteousness of God in Him who became for me wisdom, righteousness, sanctification and redemption. Are you ready? Are you eagerly awaiting the coming of your Lord? Romans 8.23 Romans 8.23 Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption. Eagerly waiting for the adoption. Look at those words, eagerly. Are you eager? Are you waiting for the adoption? The redemption of our body. That is speaking about the resurrection of the dead. That is speaking about resurrection morn. That is speaking about the day of the Lord. When he will return. My dear beloved. Are you eagerly waiting for that adoption? The redemption of your body. The redemption of your body. That day is coming. And the church of Jesus Christ is prepared for it. Are you? Amen. Good to hear you say, yeah. Praise the Lord. Let's just give him thanks and praise for his revelation and his word. Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you for exciting us with the hope of glory. Christ in us. Who became for us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. We bless you, Lord Jesus, yet again this morning. We thank you, our Heavenly Father, for the gift of life eternal. And we look for that new heaven and that new earth, which will follow the coming of your Son and our Lord Jesus Christ. Continue to give to us, O Lord, the power of the Holy Spirit to live victoriously every day and every hour, being pleasing unto you, giving you glory, honor, and praise, and producing the witness and the evidence that Jesus Christ is Lord. May the peace of God that pass all understanding continue to keep our hearts and minds in the revelation knowledge and the knowledge of Almighty God the Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. And thus may the peace of God remain in our hearts and the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit Remain with each one of us and continue its wonder work in us to the glory of God in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 
God bless you.